the story that I that I'm seeing, and and you you know if you watch the Sunday shows, the you know if it's Sunday, it's meet the Republicans. Um, it, you know, you watch these shows and you see these Republicans. Well, I saw these Republicans on TV this weekend, and I heard actually I heard one on NPR on one of the weekend shows too. I, I you know, I, I don't recall who it was, but it was some some Republican from someplace, and. The question that they're asked is, why are you opposing Joe Biden's plan to rebuild America's infrastructure? I mean, for 40 years, we have not invested our infrastructure. Our infrastructure is, is from the 80s, right? Reagan stopped all that and nobody restarted it. Why are you opposed to this? And the response that these Republicans give is, uh, if you're going to spend a couple of trillion dollars in infrastructure, you're going to produce inflation. And we're afraid of inflation. Now, they've always got something they're afraid of when they're opposing democratic policies, right? We're afraid of deficit spending because that causes inflation. We're afraid of, you know, inflation itself. We're afraid of, of the debt, the national debt. It's going to be a disaster. You know, it's going to crash the dollar. Well, let's just, let's just have some, some reality here, some real simple reality. Inflation is caused by two things. And you need to know this, so you can argue this with, with your Republican friends who are, you know, all hysterical about, oh my God, Joe Biden's plan, it's going to cause inflation. Inflation is caused by two things. The first is when a country intentionally reduces the value of their currency by printing more dollars, putting more dollars into circulation than there is needed to account for the normal flow of goods and services. And we do that very slightly and very slowly, trying to maintain about a 2% rate of inflation every year. And that's why, you know, a hamburger that cost 20 cents back in the 60s now costs, you know, two bucks. But that's controlled inflation that's done intentionally, largely so that the government can pay off its own debts with cheaper money, frankly. I mean, just to be cynical about it, but that's what's going on. Companies accommodate for that, banks, you know, so, so there's that kind of inflation. That kind of inflation is not happening in the United States right now because we're not printing massive amounts of money. We have, you know, we have created, the Fed has created trillions of dollars, um, but, it, it, but that's a drop in the bucket compared to the hundreds of trillions of dollars of U.S. dollars that, that are all over the world because we're the world's reserve currency. The second thing, and the thing that's really important for you to understand about what creates inflation, is when there is a shortage of things that are important to the economy. Back in the late 60s and the early 70s, you had, we had two Arab oil embargoes. Twice the Arabs cut off the oil to the United States as a result of our supporting Israel in a couple of wars. And those Arab oil embargoes caused the price of oil in the United States to go from eight or 10 bucks a barrel, I, I don't recall the exact amount, but it was cheap, up to 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars a barrel. And that explosion in oil prices increased the cost of literally everything. Because everything in America is, is either made with oil, transported with oil, the electricity was produced with oil. I mean, it was just, you know, the raw materials were oil, plastics, pharmaceuticals, oil was essential to our economy. There will be some inflation. And in fact, there is inflation happening right now from the recovery of this economy. And it's happening unevenly. We're seeing inflation right now. The copper prices are higher than they've ever been before. They're above, above I believe, $12,000 a ton. Um, you know, it's a huge increase. Why? Housing price, you know, building houses, construction costs, and therefore housing prices are, are inflated right now. Why? Well, we had this huge bomb cyclone, this huge cold snap that went all the way down to Texas that burst the pipes in literally a million homes in a half a dozen states. Well, that's a lot of copper. You got a lot of sheetrock that needs to be replaced. You got a lot of wallboard that needs to be put in. You got a lot of electrical wiring that needs to be replaced. And so all these things are in short supply, which drives up the price. So we're seeing some areas of local inflation. And then if you start rebuilding your infrastructure, you're going to need even more of that. So there will be some inflation in those prices. But that's just the natural response of a growing economy. That is not some out of control thing that is, that is going to bring down our economy. And, you know, people are accommodating to that. And in fact, 
you know, the, the majority of the American middle class, the principal store of their wealth is their home, and this is causing the value of their home to go up faster than the price of the dollar is going down. So this is actually arguably a good thing for the middle class. This kind of sector-based, controlled, predictable inflation. But beyond that, it's not going to debase our currency. In fact, when, when we engage, when our government engages in deficit spending, when we borrow money to spend money, when we issue treasuries to spend money, we are not corrupting our currency. We're creating debt, but we're not corrupting our currency. It's a huge distinction.